it has been projected that the next set of billionaires or at least this next billionaire is going to be a farmer and that farmer is actually going to be me now farming has the potential of making somebody rich and i mean extremely rich but also farming or agriculture has the potential of making somebody extremely poor that's if they invest their money and they do continue to make these couple of mistakes that i'm going to talk about so please stick around and enjoy the video i'm glad you're still watching my youtube channel my name is dennis duke uganda if you're new here kindly subscribe don't forget to follow me on different social media platforms at dennis duke ug so first things first what are some of the mistakes you should avoid before or while you are uh, venturing into farming many of you start your uh, your farms it could be rabbit farming goat farming fish farming cattle sheep farming uh, chickens without actually visiting a physical farm for you to get that hands-on training or kind of experience from a farmer I have always and I have always insisted you don't necessarily have to come to the Duke's farm. You can go anywhere where you'll have a physical look at how rabbit cages are constructed, how do these people actually uh, manage to run their farms, what are the technicalities involved, what are the nitty gritties of this particular agricultural venture that you're going into. So failing to do a farm visit first before you start your farm is the first step into making a huge mistake. I usually tell people that the small fee you charge at a, uh, they charge you at a farm, maybe for training or maybe for consultation, well, it may be big to you. Imagine a situation where you are going to invest about maybe more than 20 million Uganda shillings and maybe somebody is, is charging you consultation fee of about uh, maybe $100. If we translate it into Uganda money, that's about 350,000 Uganda shillings. Some people think, oh, this is way too much. Oh, I can't pay for this consultation fee. My goodness, you are literally getting your money and putting it somewhere. You could actually lose that entire money. Now, one of the things that people who have benefited from the Duke's farm say is we've, we've helped them. We actually help farmers save uh, them from making the losses that we did make at the beginning. Many people when starting farming, well, they have goals, they have ambitions, they want to start big which is quite good but sometimes it is not the way to go you find somebody starting up a farm and they are starting with about five ventures you find them starting with rabbits you find them going with fish starting chickens starting goats at the same time without actually first understanding the kind of work it takes to actually raise or keep all these animals they do that without actually understanding what exactly the dynamics involved in these different uh, agriculture ventures that they will have uh, decided to settle down with. So usually I advise farmers start with one thing and then eventually go to another and then introduce another and then introduce the other. The idea here is first understand this one venture fully. For example, we started with the rabbits. We've understood rabbits fully fully and completely to its entirety you can do the same uh, when it comes to uh, goats or whichever whichever agriculture venture you choose to settle down with start with that master it maybe for about six or eight months or even a year and then you introduce another venture another thing is people start up farming or farms without a business plan now having a business plan will save you quite a lot I remember when we were starting our farm, we didn't have a business pl plan of a sort. And uh, one of the structures that I usually tell you that uh, cost us roughly around 16 million Uganda shillings was meant to actually cost 8 million shillings. But because we didn't have a, a sort of a business plan to guide us through, we hadn't done enough research in relation to uh, these structures. My goodness, I had 8 million and it ended in 16 million. That's double the money I had planned to actually spend on that building uh, the structure of our rabbit farm. So if you have a business plan, you actually uh, self, uh, you save yourself from a couple of issues. Now the business plan 
uh, simply has the business plan overview. It has the executive summary of who you are, what is your firm uh, all about. It will have the market analysis, who and where your customers are. It will have organization and management, that's the business structure. It will have services or products, what you're going to sell or what you're going to offer. It will involve marketing and sales. Those are the projections, for example, when it comes to profits. It will include uh, financials, uh, the startup costs, and many other things that are involved in the business plan. If you do not have a business plan, go pay that consultation fee at that firm or go and get a professional consultant when it comes to that specific uh, venture that you're, you're going to go into and then get a business plan. Otherwise, you will be making a couple of mistakes. Another big mistake that farmers make is they do not make enough market research. It is because, well, you heard from a friend that rabbit farming, well, is the way to go or chicken farming, people are making huge sums of money or beekeeping or goats rearing and boom, you get your money and put in that business without actually finding out where uh, you're going to sell your animals or where you're going to sell your crops or where you're going to get your clients. That's a huge mistake. First, make a smooth or a small analysis of what's the market for this particular product or this particular venture that I'm going to go into before you actually invest in your money. A lot of people have been frustrated. Uh, a lot of them have lost money, millions if not billions of shillings. Something they, sh they would have perhaps avoided if only they had gotten enough market research. There's also another thing that I've realized in Uganda, and this has of course made lots of Ugandan farmers frustrated. They do what we call telefarming. Telefarming is a situation, okay, I don't know whether that word actually exists in the dictionary, but telefarming is a situation or a condition where somebody starts up a farm and then they have workers at the farm and then instead of them supervising these works that they have at the farm, they only call and then uh, try to find out what is happening at their different farms. So for example, somebody is in Kampala and then they have a farm in Mukono or they have a farm in... Uh, Barara, all they do is, hey, so and so, how is the farm doing? Um, are the pigs, you know, doing good? Are the goats eating well? Yes, they are. I can't remember who said it, but he said that it is what you supervise that gets done. Yes, I repeat, it is what you supervise that gets done, not what you expect. Say, for example, if I sit in my home in Kampala and then I expect the rabbits to be eating very well, Chances are high that they are actually not eating very well because I'm actually not around on ground to see that, hey, they're actually giving the real food that I, that I want, that my rabbits deserve. You understand? I usually tell farmers that if you want to start up a farm, if you really know that uh, your supervision is going to be, uh, you know, minimal, then go into things that won't need uh, high supervision. Rabbits require supervision. Uh, animals, even some crops do require supervision like pigs, like goats, like cows, sheep, almost most of them require supervision. And supervision I mean at least be there um, three times or four times a week. Don't get this money and invest and leave your project in the hands of incompetent workers. I mean workers who've not been trained, workers who've never been to an agricultural institution, let workers be helping you. A worker will call you and say, boss, we don't have food yet. Actually, food is there. A, a farmer will call you and say, this goat died when he knows very well that the, 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 the goat is still alive. And because you are not this kind of a person who is maybe a little bit strict. Person actually I had somewhere that uh, this guy started up a chicken farm and the person who was the manager also started up another chicken farm somewhere using the resources, using the feeds that this farmer or this boss, their boss was actually doing. And when this one collapsed, this worker's farm exploded or it, it, it blossomed. You understand? That's how evil workers are. So to avoid all those nitty gritties of who and where should I get a trusted worker and so forth, 
please make sure you don't uh, do what we call uh, tele farming. Another mistake that farmers make is growing too big too fast. Here is what I mean. Growing too big too fast is simply when you start at a certain level and well you get to understand a few things and a few dynamics and then boom you get all your money and actually invest here. They don't do like that. Let this growth be gradual. Even if you saw the potential of making 20 million Uganda shillings, uh, well, very quickly, please don't go. Because farming is a bit technical. Farming is a bit unreliable sometimes, okay? You may invest your money thinking that this is what I'm going to get, and then boom. So learn to grow gradually. Let this growth be uh, periodic I should say set goals say maybe this year I should expand from a 20 feet house to maybe 50 feet house that's understandable that's 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 really manageable but you want to start from 20 and then boom eventually you're at 100 you're going to collapse having too little capital Usually I tell farmers start small. By starting small, I don't mean to start with 10,000. I mean start with what you have, but look at how or ways of actually increasing it. By starting small, we don't mean to start too small. We, start, we want to start with something that, is, that gives you an economic uh, uh, sense, okay, that makes economic sense. Say, so for example, if, even if you were to start a beehive, you, starting with one is okay, you've started, but... It doesn't make economic sense you understand so if you started with about 10 beehives that makes an economic sense and that is starting uh, small if you started with roughly around um, maybe 10 to 15 rabbits that's starting small but if you started with two rabbits that's starting way too small you're going to get frustrated another is I find very many people running their farms as hobby or as a hobby and not as a business it just happens that uh, when you're doing something as a hobby, you don't put in that much effort in trying to see results at the end of the day. So please see everything that you do in farming as a business. This is my job because I no longer have any job. Farming is my job, so I take it very, very uh, seriously. I may say the last, but definitely not the least is some farmers have failed even the ones I have actually trained have failed to completely, even for a single day, try to manage their records. What am I talking about? Record keeping in farming is one of the key factors for you to become a successful farmer. You will do whatever you will do. You will do all the things, you will feed the rabbits well, you will feed the goats well, the cows well, but if you fail at Record keeping, you'll be digging a grave for yourself. And record keeping helps you know what is happening on the farm. Because say for example in uh, animal rearing, you would want to avoid inbreeding. You, you can't avoid it without having a good record, okay? Uh, record, good record practices, you understand? So you need to have records at your farm. Know how many animals you have. Know how much you've invested in those crops. Know how much it costs you for maintenance. It could be rabbit, it could be goat, it could be chicken. How much are you investing in per daily or per, per, per month? And then at the end of the day, how much did you sell? But you can't know how much you're making when you don't know a book or when you don't have a book that actually records the sales, records the expenses. And at the end of the day, you add and subtract the expenses and then you know the margin or the the kind of profit you're actually working with my name is dennis duke uganda thank you so much for watching have a lovely day i wish you all the best goodbye